In this video, I'll be showing you how to add echo and reverb in Audacity. They're similar effects and often get confused. Echo creates echoes, and reverb simulates speaking in a larger room. Hard to explain, but I'll just demonstrate. My original track, testing Audacity's G-verb effect to simulate speaking in a larger room. I'll just duplicate that and mute the original, and then go to effect, and down to echo. Delay time is how long the echoes take before you hear them. I'll change this to like 0.3. And decay factor is how loud the echoes are. And 0.5 is good for now. Testing, Testing Audacity's Jeever effect. effect. And you get the idea. It gives you a bunch of echoes. Just undo that. Go down to effect and delay, which is a more customizable version of the echoes. Delay type, there's three options. You have regular, which means all the echoes will be the same distance from each other. Bouncing ball. As time progresses, the echoes will get closer and closer together, and reverse bouncing ball means that they'll get farther apart. Delay level per echo is how loud your echoes are, and you want to make sure this is a negative value so that you can actually hear the original sound. Delay time is how long it takes for the echoes to take effect. I'm going to change this to 0.2. Of course, it depends on what type of effect you want. I'll leave the next two effects alone for now and go to number of echoes. Self-explanatory. Allow duration to change. When you use this effect, it'll probably want to add some more echoes at the end, which means that your clip will end up being a bit longer. If you check this value to no, then it'll just truncate those echoes at the end. Testing, Testing Audacity's g effect, effect to simulate speaking, speaking in a larger, larger room. room. See, our original track ends here, and yet the new one goes on a bit longer. I'll just undo that and go back to the delay effect. Pitch change effect. This means your echoes will get a little higher or get lower during each echo. Pitch and tempo will change the pitch and tempo, whereas LQF pitch shift only changes the pitch. Positive values for the semitones means it'll get higher, and negative means it'll get lower. Testing, Testing Audacity's g effect to simulate speed. So that's echoes using the echo and delay effect. However, reverberation is a bit more complicated. Go down to effect, g -verb. This simulates speaking in like an auditorium. The default settings are okay, but I'll change a few. Room size in meters is the approximate size of the room. Change it to 40 for now. If you have this all the way to the right, it'll sound like you're in an airplane hangar, and if you have it on the left, the echo bounce back will be just much quicker. Reverb time is how long the reverberations last, and I prefer it at 0.1, but honestly, I haven't heard much of a difference between 0.1 and 30. Damping input bandwidth are fine where they are, 0.5 and 0.75, and dry signal level, put this at negative 70. This will create a track with all reverberation, since we have an original track and a duplicate, and then we're going to mix them together. If you put this value at zero, it will retain some of the original effect, but I found better results mixing the two tracks together. Early reflection level and tail level. These are fine where they are, you just need to make sure that the difference is between 10 and 20, so here we have 17.5, which is fine. Testing the last so there we have the reverberation added, but we're going to mix it together with the first one, and I'm going to turn down the gain. Testing Audacity's g effect to simulate speaking in a larger room. And it depends on how accentuated you want the effect to be, but for me it's at negative 7. And when you export these files, it'll mix them into one track. And that's a basic introduction to echoes and reverberation in Audacity.